Hey, what's up guys, Mar again. Uh, I am gonna go over uh, some of the trades that I made today. Now, I just wanna go over uh, today's strategy. Yesterday, I did have a, a pretty good day, a very nice day. So today's overall strategy is to protect those gains. Um, so I didn't really see any uh, strategies that I really like, like low hanging fruit, short. Um, there was one on plug technologies kind of today, uh, but now that I really look into it, uh, wasn't really the best looking and fruit setup out there. Uh, I also did trade Zoom on a first green day, uh, but they didn't really work out how I expected. Uh, but I, again, they take a loss in those, but nothing uh, more than what I was willing to risk, uh, which is okay. Uh, it is part of the game. So I'm gonna kind of explain to you um, how was, I traded those, those stocks, what I was looking at, and how I was able to mitigate and, and cut back on my losses so it didn't go more than I, than I wanted to. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's share the screen now. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel if you find any value. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Let's get started. So let me share my screen so I can kind of go over those trades. So today, um, in, in terms of um, the market overall, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, yesterday we had a huge down move um, in, in uh, some of the, uh, I guess you could say, the fangs, uh, especially uh, – Facebook and, and we had a huge down move on, on, on Twitter. Uh, but today, you know, I was expecting that like this gap up to kind of be sold off right away, but it kind of continued to trend on the market. Uh, so we had plug technologies over here, um, had a, 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 a some sort of uh, some news that uh, a large billionaire investor had a 5% stake. And, and where is the news? The news should be right here it is. So David Shaw reports a 5% passive stake in power technology. So uh, that's, a, that's usually really good news. You know, when large investors come into uh, small companies like Plug, uh, a lot of people like that. A lot of people want to be in that position, and that's why we had this move. So originally, my thought process was, you know, we had a big move yesterday and a bounce out of the 14 level. So I was kind of looking for a low-hanging fruit long, um, you know, uh, today. But because of the news, it kind of created this gap up. Uh, my original thought process was like, hey, hopefully we get a week open and I could get in here at the, the midpoint, you know? So like a week open, I could get in some shares, get some shares at the, uh, the open, and hopefully we get like a some sort of uh, red to green move. But there was a huge, uh, of course, there was a, the, it was a gap up and there was a huge spike at the open. And I felt like this was pretty much the move uh, that happened today. Um, and I should have just uh, kind of like let it go. But, you know, since I have no other <laughs> other good setups besides uh, Zoom that I was looking at, you know, I decided to stick around. But that's okay. You know, um, you know, I decided to stick around and see if there was going to be a trade. Now, there was a first bounce up a trade here on the first pullback to uh, the 1694 uh, area, close to the VWAP. And we had a first bounce uh, where it kind of like hit that 1720. But what I was actually looking here, I actually kind of liked that there was some consolidation. There was kind of like a little double bottom here in, in the one minute chart. And I felt because of the uh, high short interest, I believe there was like over 20% short interest. I felt like that if it broke out of this high, they were going to kind of like spike again and continue to trend. And the reason why I also thought that is because the NASDAQ and, and the S&P 500, they were just ripping like crazy. They were just trending like insanely. Um, and I actually really liked it. And I do the market could go, some of these stocks could go, plug could be one of them. So that was my thought process. My stop was actually, my risk level was around 1680. So I had a pretty wide range. Uh, so I got in, you know, here at, at the break of uh, this higher high, uh, 1720. Uh, but it could literally just kind of stuff there. So I was like, oh, doesn't that look good? So as soon as I saw the stuff, you know, I was kind of waiting, you know, hopefully this stuff gets bite up, you know, gets absorbed and we get a continuation, but it didn't. And as soon as I kind of saw the level two that it was not going to go, I took half off right away um, and it continued to downtrend. Uh, I was hoping that, you know, 1694 was going to hold. It didn't look like it was holding. I took another half and I took the rest off once it broke this kind of level. So that's how I was able to mitigate my losses. Um, you know, when the, one of the things that I do is that even though my, my initial uh, risk was uh, 1680, you know, my thought process is if this doesn't go how I expect it to go, I cut back right away. And that's one of the things that helps me cut all my losses really quick is that if I have an idea, if I have a thought process, okay, if I go in here, 
I expect it to spike. I expect it to kind of go. And if it doesn't, hey, I'm cutting back as soon as possible. So that's how I'm able to cut my losses. And, uh, and, and that was okay, guys. Like I said, it's part of trading. You know, sometimes you lose, you know, and, and the, the goal, of course, is to win more than what you lose. And then this trade, I was able to cut back right away, you know, and, and not let it kind of just wait to see if, uh, if the, six, uh, the 680 holds, you know. So that helped me cut some of those losses. So now let's take a look at Zoom. So Zoom, uh, the reason why I like Zoom is because it's kind of oversold on the daily chart. Uh, so let me look at the Bollinger Bands. Where are the Bollinger Bands? Okay, here they are. Actually, let me cut this. All right. So the Bollinger Bands, uh, they're definitely testing the, the lower side of it. Um, it's stochastics. It's over already uh, below 20. So that, that kind of indicates right there that it's or, or, already oversold. So I'm looking for a bounce. I'm looking for a first green day. And the market was just ripping today. So I felt, you know what? The market's ripping. I think ZM, because just it's because it's, it's oversold, I think it could also go. So, you know, intraday, I really like this, um, this uh, uh, 450 level. You know, for, it was between 450 and 460, those major uh, intra, uh, excuse me, uh, daily support levels that I was looking at. So yesterday, uh, it did break below 460 and 450, but I reclaimed the 450 level. And today, it had a week open. And I was actually, sorry about that, guys. I was actually looking for, uh, for, uh, for actually trade off, off this move, actually. Uh, but it actually, it actually created a lower low. So like, you know what? I'm going to wait and see what happens. So I was actually looking here to get in on a break of a, a 40, uh, 40, 40, uh, 52 area, but, and it was creating like a double, uh, like a, like a W pattern, but it went like a lower low. And I'm like, ah, eh, I'm going to wait and see what happens. And it actually spiked up all the way to 460. So I was looking at that. I was really looking at that guys, but I, I did not trade that, but you know, my second, my second thought process was like, okay, we got this first spike. So that looks good. You know, the market's spiking. It had a spike. So you know what? I think this could hold. Uh, and maybe I'm going to get in and I'm pull back to uh, 450. And if it holds and it continues to trend, I'm going to get in that, that trend for like a um, end of day move, like a, a power hour type of move. So it did pull back to 450. And I saw that it, that it, that it held 450. So I like that. And it created, I guess you can see a, a higher low. And you see this downtrend. I, I was looking, if it breaks this downtrend, it creates a higher high. And it breaks uh, 454 and 455. I think this thing could go. I think this is a good fly for a, a power hour move. You know, because again, the NASDAQ was just moving like crazy. So, you know, uh, you know I felt like Zoom, as Zoom was going to follow uh, next. So that was my thought process. So um, I did start my initial starter size once it broke, uh, you know, 454. Um, the only problem was it actually stuffed right away. So that's the thing about, you know, when you trade breakouts, sometimes they stuff, sometimes it's better to kind of maybe uh, wait to it for it to kind of break. And if it holds that, that level, then you get in. Uh, but usually what I do is I, because sometimes when it breaks out of those levels, it just kind of breaks and goes. So it's really hard to kind of get in in a good spot once it breaks. So what I usually do is I usually start small, you know, have my starter and if that starter runs and it keeps going, then I usually add. So my, my ad was going to be, if it breaks 455, I'm going to add my second half. So this was a starter. Um, it hit 454, but it actually stopped there and I got in, but it stopped and it pulled back. And my goal was like, okay, I'm going to wait it out. You know, the market's still trending. I'm going to wait it out. Again, it's still kind of early in the day. There's still like an hour or two hours left in the market. Uh, so I felt, you know what, this could hold this trend, this uptrend, and can continue break 455 and maybe uh, break 460 and we have a power hour move at the end of the day. But it didn't. It. it pulled back and it, and it broke below uh, this uptrend that I really like, and I decided to get out. And that was pretty much it. You know, so I was able to get, cut my losses pretty quick on that. So, you know, yesterday had a really big uh, day. So uh, again, guys, uh, you know, today, uh, I guess you could say the, the goal was to kind of, you know, take it easy, uh, trade small, you know, protect yesterday's profits. 
Um, you know, even though it did take two losses today, um, I was able to keep them under my risk measurements, uh, which, uh, which was good, you know. And at the end of the day, you, there's no such thing as a perfect trader. Um, you may have some good trade ideas, uh, but the market may do whatever it wants and the stock may do whatever it wants. You know, I think a lot of it was had to do with the uncertainty of uh, the election tomorrow. Today's the election and we're probably not going to get results until tomorrow. So I can see why a lot of traders or investors, uh, long-term investors are like, you know what, I want to wait to see what happens with these elections before I decide to commit on a long-term position like Zoom. Uh, so I really think that's kind of what happened today. So, hey, it is what it is, guys. Um, again, uh, trading is a sport. Um, you got to cut your losses and you got to add to your winners. I mean, that's always the goal. Your winners always have to be bigger than your, than your losses. And that's how you win. You know, that's how you win. That's how you make uh, able to make a, a income as a trader. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel if you learned something. Uh, see you at the next one, guys. Have a good one.